Now you can never be sure what to believe. People will tell you all sorts of things. They also said that artificial sweeteners were safe, WMDs were in Iraq, and Anna Nicole married for love. This is the Nighthawk Real Deal Radio with Jeff Courier on CJOB 68. Many of you are aware that Manitoba is one of the, per capita, one of the biggest consumers of wine in Canada. It may seem a little counterintuitive, but it's true. And the Winnipeg Wine Festival, which is an enormous success here every year, is part of the testament to that. We're all, though, as Manitobans, always on the lookout for a good bargain. And that's where I'm here to help you tonight. At least my next guest is, anyway. She is Natalie McLean. She is a uh, best-selling author of the book Red, White, and Drunk All Over. Her latest work is called Unquenchable, a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines. And she has traveled the world in search of the wines that are not only affordable, but drinkable, too. Natalie, that's 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 the combination, right? It's got to be affordable, but it can't be swill. Exactly. Um, bargain, Jeff, to me means the price-quality ratio. So I wasn't looking for the cheapest wines, cheap and uncheerful, if you will, but I was looking for those that wines that taste twice as expensive as they cost, and, and usually they were in that 10 to 15 or $17 range at the most. All right, and... and that, you know, sometimes we think we get a bargain, but we only get it cheap. Exactly, exactly. So, there, I mean, there's a wide range of, of wines and prices on the shelves these days, but I do think there's a sweet uh, point in that price range that I mentioned where, you know, producers um, are investing enough in the wines to make them of really good quality, and yet you're not overpaying at the high end for, you know, a high critic score, or just the prestige or rarity of the wine, you know, those intangible factors that have nothing to do with cost. So I think if you stay within that range, you can find some really true bargains without and, giving up good taste. And, and one of the, the uh, methods that you like to use is to look for areas, look for regions in famous wine-producing countries that are a little less well-known. Exactly. So if we take Italy or France, the northern areas of those two countries are famous for their wine. So in Italy, it's Piedmont and Tuscany, and you're going to pay up big time. In France, it's Bordeaux and Burgundy. But if you go down south in both countries, to Sicily, Italy, or to the Languedoc or uh, Provence in France, you, that's where your bargains are. It's because they haven't established the same sort of reputation, um, but they are, they've so improved their winemaking techniques and, um, you know, they used to be known for sort of rustic country wines, but today the wines that the, both of those areas produce are, are terrific. All right, so if, if you're looking for a, something that's good, very drinkable, go to countries that know how to make wine, but go off the beaten path a little bit, which is what you did on some of your travels. Exactly, and and kind of the twin tip, insider tip that goes with that is also look for grapes that are a bit lesser known. So in Sicily, they make um, luscious, uh, ripe, robust red wines from the grape called Nero d'Avola, which literally Nero means black, um, of Avola, a region. But So if you um, go for that, instead of brand name grapes like Cabernet or Chardonnay, um, those, those are the grapes um, where you're going to pay up, but if you get the obscure ones, you will pay less. In, um, so that's Italy, and then in France, you know, in the Languedoc, they're using grapes such as uh, Movedre and Grenache, and, you know, some of them are even tongue twisters, but that really helps. And so that's why I traveled to those countries and sought out those passionate winemakers who were making wines in those regions. Isn't it true that for most of us, Natalie, who are, you know, are us non sommeliers we wouldn't know the difference anyway? <laughs> Well, I guess that's true. I, I don't know if I... I mean, we, know if, we, I mean, we, we know if it's bilge water, but, it, but the, sometimes the difference between the $15 bottle of wine and the $50 bottle of wine, you've got to have a reasonably refined palate to know the difference. Exactly. And you know what? I don't think there always is a difference. I do think more and more of those intangible factors come into play into the price as you get higher and higher up the, the, the range. And I, I know it's not linear in that, you know, a $100 bottle of wine is not always or most of the time 10 times better than a 10 buck wine. And so, you know, all we're looking for is affordable wines that we can enjoy with dinner uh, because we're all drinking on a budget. And if you like to have wine, you know, a few times a week or, or more often, there's no way most of us can slap down 50 bucks or more 
uh, for a bottle of wine every time we open one. So this is really designed for people who, uh, who like wine, maybe are not experts, but really would want to kind of enhance their knowledge, expand their knowledge, expand their palates and all that sort of good stuff, but, they don't want, but you don't want to break the bank doing it. Exactly. So the book is structured um, first of all, there's sort of stories, so you get to be an armchair traveler with me to some of these gorgeous vineyard locations because, you know, vineyards are always, you know, great vacation destinations, whether you can get there or not. Um, and then you meet these passionate winemakers, and, and in telling their stories, I tell the story of wine, so you learn a lot about wine. But then at the end of every chapter, there are the insider tips. So I give lists of here are the good brands to buy, like wineries or wine labels. Here are the food matches. Here are some recipes. Here are some other websites you might want to visit to learn more about these regions and that sort of thing. And I, I tie all of that as well very closely um, to my website at nataliemcclain.com and the mobile app, apps because – Random House, for some reason, wasn't willing to publish my book every month, but the wines change in the stores every month. So I've tried to keep it current by sort of marrying the book and the website together. Well, that's, that's one of the things about wine, isn't it, Natalie, is that the, the, the brands, the, uh, the goalposts are always kind of shifting a little bit because the vines age, the grapes change, the, the, the age of the barrels that they're aged in changes. So... No wine stays exactly the same forever. Exactly, and that's why we have wine critics, not orange juice critics. So, um, you know, a book you read, like say uh, I, I was fortunate enough to meet Peter Mail, a year in Provence, author of um, In Provence. His book, if you read it eight years ago, is essentially going to be the same if you were to buy it um, in a bookstore today. But a wine that a winery produced eight years ago may be quite different in style um, when it produces it today. The, the winemaker could have changed. The, the weather could have been different. As you were saying, those other factors will change it as well. And so that's why people find wine confusing but fascinating. And so I'm trying to net all that down for those who, who do want a shorthand, a shopping list, and have fun with it, not be overwhelmed when they walk into the liquor store and go, well, do I like a castle in the middle distance or a fluffy school on the label? <laughs> All right. We're going to come back and talk more to Natalie McLean. Her latest book is Unquenchable, a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines. Not cheap wines, bargain wines. You're listening to The Nighthawk on CJOB 68. We live in extraordinary times and in an amazing place. I've been here 15 years and Winnipeg never ceases to amaze me. And the time and the place are here and now on the Nighthawk on CJOB 68. Hi, this is Brian Barkley with another traffic tip from Manitoba Public Insurance. No matter how experienced a driver you are, winter conditions affect your ability to control a vehicle. Here are a few tips to keep your travel safe. Start off slowly and test your braking and steering. As you approach an intersection, scan for traction, such as sand or bare pavement, to avoid slipping. Accelerate and decelerate gradually. Avoid using cruise control. Make sure your vehicle tires have good tread and check the tire pressure. These simple actions can prevent a collision. A message from Manitoba Public Insurance. Weedman is Canada's first choice for lawn care. But did you know during the winter, we transform properties into winter wonderlands with Christmas decor? Weedman specializes in professional installation of energy-efficient LED lights, beautiful wreaths, garlands, and now we offer Galaxy Laser Lights, the newest craze in holiday lights. The holidays are busy enough. Let us take care of the decorating. Call 66-99333 and we'll handle it all. From professional installation and proactive maintenance to take down to storage, call the Weedman today or visit christmasdecor.net. CJOB weather for Winnipeg at Southern Manitoba. Partly cloudy skies tonight, a 30% chance of flurries. Northwest winds at about 30 kilometers per hour and a low of minus 8. Cloudy with a 70% chance of flurries tomorrow and a high of minus 2. Going to be chilly tomorrow night down to minus 12. And then for Thursday, sunny and minus 5. Friday, the long range, a mix of sun and cloud and a high of minus 3. Right now in Winnipeg, mostly cloudy, minus 5. West winds at 24 kilometers per hour, and that's giving us a wind chill of minus 12. The relative humidity is 76%. It's 940 in Winnipeg, mostly cloudy and minus 5.
Mainstay Suites Winnipeg welcomes you to their fabulous new extended stay hotel, where residential style suites and affordable rates allow you to make yourself at home for as long as you like. Whether your stay is for a day, week, or month, their suites offer plenty of room and all the put your feet up comforts of home that you can't live without. All studios and suites feature full kitchens, free internet, as well as complimentary breakfast. Your home on the road. Mainstay Suites. For reservations, call 594-0500 or visit choicehotels.com. This is T.J. McGrabman of Crossroads Insurance. Time to renew your home insurance policy? Moving or buying a new home? With a few clicks at crossroadsinsurance.ca, receive up to seven quotes from seven different carriers. It's that quick and that easy. And if you want to talk to a live person, we're still here for you at our St. Mattel and Tyndall Park locations. It's a little thing called service. Expect it at Crossroads Insurance. Open six days a week in person or 24 hours a day at crossroadsinsurance.ca. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. What is wrong with you? Snow means hours of shoveling off these driveways. Hey, neighbor. Not anymore. I just picked up my new Simplicity Snow Thrower from Toulon Tractor and Motor in Toulon. Has a Briggs & Stratton Snow Series engine for tons of power. Simplicity Snow Thrower. That sounds pretty expensive. Not at Toulon Tractor and Motor in Toulon. They have Simplicity Snow Throwers starting at $4.99, and they have enough power to throw my snow into your yard. So let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Get your Simplicity Snow Thrower from Toulon Tractor and Motor in Toulon. Everything starts at Toulon Tractor and motor you'll get wisdom from surprising sources on this show like an aging rocker who likes the idea of getting older we all love jimmy but we all love janice but we all love jim but we all love elvis but <laughs> we all love michael but behave yourself take it seriously take everything seriously and you thought sammy hagar was just a headbanger we're just full of surprises here on the nighthawk on cjob 68 the, the information, information superstation Natalie McLean is my guest uh, right now on the Nighthawk. Her latest book is Unquenchable, a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines. Part travelogue, part education, and uh, part wine manual. Uh, she explores a number of wine-producing regions around the world in search for the, the great bargain wines. You went to Australia. Now, Australian wines have become extremely popular here in Manitoba, particularly the Wolf Blast brand. And, and you got to meet Wolf Blast isn't just a name. It's a guy. And yeah. he, he turns out to be sort of one of these, like, old-world man's men, right? I mean, he's, he's, he's chauvinistic, he's coarse, he's rough around the edges, but he produces great wine. Yeah, well, I, I characterize him as quite randy. <laughs> he had yeah. a lot of uh, um, pep, and uh, what I liked about Wolf Blast is he was provocative and, so, um, and colorful, but passionate, absolutely passionate about making wine. And so I found him to be one of the best people I talked to. And it is interesting, just stepping back there for a moment, most people do think he's just a brand character, but he's real. And so it was a real treat to meet him. He's into his 70s now. And, you know, he took me all around the winery. We tasted his wines and so on. Um, but, you know, he... He really is blunt about, you know, um, the wines of his country and where they're going, where they've been. And you're right, uh, Australia's had tremendous success in the Canadian wine market. And I think for a while there, there they were faltering a bit as Argentina came on strong with its, you know, Malbec, another chapter in the book. But now I think Australia's back again on the uptick and, you know, has really um, repositioned itself uh, as still a value producer but with a very um, diverse range of styles. But Foster's, the big Australian beer company, their most famous beer company, has bought up a lot of the wineries. Has that changed the product yeah. at all? Um, not, to, to, not to my palate. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because I, I don't know what the absolute latest numbers are, but um, it was, uh, uh, it used to be that 80% of all wine in Australia was produced by two corporations that owned multiple, multiple wineries. But the smart um, corporations let those wineries do what they do best and don't try to make the winemaking decisions. What they're trying to achieve is economies of scale with marketing and distribution and so on in the sales channel. But, um, the, you know, I think that uh, for a while, um, you know, the, the wines of Australia, that was partly why they were faltering, is they were all becoming very uniform, very homogenized. And I think that's what they've, at least some of them, have broken away from and trying to get back to um, original styles, regionality, um, you know, food friendliness, not being so heavy on the, alk and, or the um, oak and the alcohol. I, I ask you about Australia because, of course, we're heading into the winter months in Canada 
And one of your recommendations is when it's cold, when you're when we're eating heavier meals, you know, we're eating more steaks or roast beef or lamb and that kind of thing, to to drink wines that come from a warmer climate in colder weather. Yes, because a warmer climate um, translates into uh, more sugar in the grapes because they get riper, and more sugar in the grapes translates to more alcohol. So um, it's not a, a direct statement of, you know, make sure you buy high alcohol wines, but these wines do tend to be more robust, more flavorful, and therefore they go with the heartier dishes that we enjoy in the winter, like a nice juicy steak or prime rib or pork chops or whatever, uh, you, you know, you, you like. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's why I say, and then the reverse is true. In the summer, go for cool climates. Um, we here in Canada produce um, wonderful Rieslings and Pinot Noirs, but we're a cool climate. And those wines, Riesling white, Pinot Noir red, um, are less robust. They're packed with flavor, but they, they're not as uh, full-bodied as, say, the Australian Shirazes. And they're terrific in the summer. Like a nicer, like you're talking about the Niagara region primarily with, the, with those nice Pinot Noirs. Absolutely, but also the Okanagan. The Okanagan has um, tremendous uh, Pinot Noirs and Rieslings. And, you know, these days, ev uh, just about every uh, uh, province across the country, including Manitoba, produces wine. And so, you know, there's a real a variety of choose from that is, you know, literally in our own backyard. All right. At one time, Canadian wine was thought to be absolutely undrinkable. <laughs> we went through the zoological period of baby duck, gimli goose. <laughs> it was kind of grim, but that was back in the 70s. And I think that image still has a bit of a hangover these days that's undeserved. Um, these days, you know, our wines are world class and they win in international competitions. Um, the reason why Canadian wines aren't better known internationally is that we don't produce enough um, to fill the channel and get out there for exports. But that in, in the wine world, producing just a small amount is a good thing. And so we should, I think we should cherish what we have. Uh, well, well you, mentioned, you mentioned at least one, one Australian producer that makes only about 40,000 cases a year, which is not very much. Right, yeah, that would be sort of small to mid-sized. Um, they can even get smaller than that. Uh, you know, in Niagara, there are some just doing two to 5,000 cases. And so, as you can imagine, that's going to be mostly a direct sale from the winery, not even getting into some of the liquor store um, chains across the country. Mm. So is marketing one of our challenges? Uh, be it, you know, for the, for the smaller wineries that they just don't have the, they don't have the, the resources or the expertise to market internationally? Yes, I, I think they have to decide um, what kind of winery they want to be. And if they want to stay small, that's terrific. And then what they need to do is develop their own customer mailing list and sell directly. So when either people visit the winery or they're shipping out and sending the wines directly to their customers, is probably the only way they're going to do that with a small volume. Mm. Yeah. Uh, now, you, to, to stay on the, on the cooler climate wines, you mentioned you visited Germany as well, and they make some very nice light Rieslings. Absolutely. Germany is uh, so underrated, and that's another insider tip. Look for a country that had a, a dreary reputation a few decades ago. I don't know if you remember, but the syrupy stuff behind the high school portable. Um, but, you know, it's come a long way. And, uh, you know, today's Rieslings especially, that's their specialty, go from bone dry to if you want sweet. But, you know, the sweetness is not that syrupy sweetness. It's a natural sweet sweetness that goes very well with food. And so German, uh, Germany has a tough time, too, because for Anglos like us in North America, sometimes it's hard to read their labels because they do have the long German names and the Gothic script and so on. But if you start to get familiar with some of the wineries that you like, and again, I've noted some of these at the back of the chapter on Germany, you will find some huge bargains in that region. All right, we're going to come back and uh, wrap up our conversation with Natalie McLean. Her book is Unquenchable, a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines. NatalieMcLean.com, the website. And you're listening to The Nighthawk on CJOB 68. Posing the tough questions is what we're all about on The Nighthawk. What is your position on uh, breast implants? If you've got the answers to the tough questions, try The Nighthawk's Day After blog at CJOB.com. 
Kelly Moore alongside Jim Toth with CJOB Sports. If you have a minor hockey league player in your family, here's their chance for a big league experience. Register your novice or out of Winnipeg minor hockey team online now for Rona's Minor Hockey Road Show on CJOB 68. They can win a chance to play a game at MTS Iceplex with CJOB on hand, lots of prizes, and all the bells and whistles for an unforgettable experience. Sponsored by Rona and the WMAJ. Sign up for the Rona Minor Hockey Road Show now at CJOB.com. You could my love Canada's beloved songwriter, the legendary Gordon Lightfoot, is coming to Winnipeg on Friday, December 2nd at the RBC Theatre at MTS Centre. Don't miss your chance to see the folk rock legend. Tickets available at all Ticketmaster outlets. Charge by phone 1-855-985-5000 or online at Ticketmaster.ca. An evening with Gordon Lightfoot, December 2nd at MTS Centre. We're back with another Aviva Healthy Lifestyle Minute. Talking to Nathan Zassman from Aviva at 1224 St. James, Aviva has been helping Canadians with natural health solutions for over 10 years. Michelle is on the line. I understand you suffer from seasonal allergies. My allergies are driving me crazy. I've got itchy eyes. I'm stuffed up. Do you have anything that can help? When we're exposed to an allergen, a chemical called histamine is released, which causes the allergy symptoms. We have natural products, including Immunocare and Quercetin, that can help inhibit histamine production without the side effects of traditional medications. Also, air purifiers can remove the allergy-triggering particles. Cleaner air not only eases allergy symptoms, but can even improve quality of sleep. If air quality is causing your allergy symptoms, we can show you how effective our air purifiers from Blue Air and IQ Air can be. If you have any questions regarding what you heard today, visit Aviva.ca and see the natural health experts at Aviva, St. James in Wellington. Aviva, everything for healthy living. You only have one chance to make a great first impression. Trust Quintex to be there with you. Quintex mats will always be fresh, clean, and welcoming to people coming through your door. Maintained entrance mats enhance your decor, ensure the safety of your customers, and reduce wear on other areas of your building. From uniforms to mats, linen, and first aid, we've got you covered. To see what we can do for you in our second century of business, visit us at QuintexServices.com. Here we grow again. Dulux Paints, formerly ICI Paints, is now open at 4910 Roblin Boulevard in the heart of Charleswood. Now there are nine Dulux Paint locations in Winnipeg and more on the way. Dulux Paints is here to serve the needs of the professional contractors as well as a do-it-yourself consumer. Dulux Paints is part of Axe Noble, the world's largest coating manufacturer. If it's worth doing, it's worth Dulux. Check out our new location at 4910 Roblin. Dulux Paints, now with nine stores to serve you best. If you're looking for life's real lessons, you've come to the right place. If you stand inside the tunnel and you see that light coming towards you and it's getting bigger and bigger, it's a train. If you don't get out of the way, that old choo-choo's going to pancake you, son. Jeff Courier has a million of them right here on the Nighthawk on CJOB 68. Drinking wine. It is so popular in Manitoba. Uh, we are among the country's foremost consumers of wine. We've fallen in love with it in recent years, and the Winnipeg Wine Festival is testament to that kind of success. And my guest, Natalie McLean, is also a, I was going to say a wino, but that's hardly, hardly accurate. Although maybe it is, I don't know. But, but the, <laughs> Not the, far from it. <laughs> the, 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 book, the book is unquenchable. Uh, a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines, and you've uh, scoured the earth. You've left some regions out. You can't cover the entire planet. For example, you didn't tackle California in this book. Exactly. And, you know, I think one of the same rules of thumb would apply there. So in Northern California, Napa and Sonoma, you're going to pay up big time, but go down to the lesser known Southern regions of California, like Paso Robles or Santa Cruz. Similarly, I, um, I didn't do, I didn't cover Chile, a tremendous source of bargains, but because I did a chapter in Argentina and talked, referred to Chile quite a bit, um, you know, I'll yeah. leave Chile for book three. <laughs> well, okay, now, now one of the things you, you mentioned when you did talk about Argentina, uh, as opposed to having having taken over some of the market share from some of the Australian wines, the, the competition level there, you also talk about currency exchange. And and yes. if you're looking for good bargains uh, and you're, you're buying foreign wines, to think about currency exchange and, and how far will the Canadian dollar go? Exactly. Well, with Argentina, for the longest time, it's um, that's been a huge advantage as well for Chile, uh, where prices have been um, even lower than they would be 
reflecting true costs of production. So when you combine a favorable, the favorable exchange we have with those countries, in addition to their natural cost advantage, um, they're in climates that are always warm, so they're not losing crop due to, you know, a bad year like uh, like rains or pests or mildew, um, as we do have to fight here in Canada and other cool climates like northern France. Um, low labor costs, low land costs, all that all combines to make uh, those wines incredibly competitive on a price basis. What, what is it about wine that, that is so fascinating? Is it because it is, it's an endless variety because new wines are coming all the time and because it's, it's not a fixed kind of uh, passion that, uh, that once you learn about a wine that that's it, that there, that there are thousands of flavors to choose from? That's definitely part of it. And I look at wine um, and think, well, why is it that we do have so many people who write about wine and so, so many people who are fascinated by wine in a way that they're not with other beverages or foods? And I think it's because wine can um, hit us at three levels. So there's the intellectual level if you want it. I always say you could do a liberal arts degree with wine as the organizing hub. So wine ties to other cultures, religion, science, art, agriculture, commerce, and so on, and, and history. And so if you want to dive into it, you can in terms of, of that level. Then there's the level of sensory enjoyment, and that's what does this wine smell like? How is it different from other wines? Which foods does it go with? And then there's the pure hedonistic buzz. Wine has alcohol. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's something to that, that integration of of mind, body, and soul, I guess, that really draws us to the glass and back again. Mm. And, and so that there is, there is that kind of sensual experience, or, exactly. or it should, and on a good day, that's the way it should be. Yes, yes, and and always different as you're as you were saying, because there are so many different producers, and you know it depends on what you're eating with, uh, uh, like the food that you're pairing with it or the person you're with it can influence greatly the, the kind of experience you have. If, if you've traveled to a region and had a, a nice bottle of dry rosé beside the sparkling Mediterranean, uh, that wine might taste different back in an apartment when it's raining outside. <laughs> well, can you spot a wine snob? Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, they're a diminishing breed, I must say, with great relief. <laughs> um, you know, I think these days there's so many people who are into wine. I think the only snobbish thing is to be caught up with uh, drinking badges, so to speak, only drinking, you know, wines that uh, are expensive and have high scores, or, you know, f being obsessed with the perfect wine and food match. I mean, I do a lot of food and wine matching on my site, but it's, it's playful. It's meant to experiment. And, you know, there's no better expert on your palate and what you like uh, than you are. Okay, and only a few seconds left, but one tip that you do bring out in the book is don't let the stuff sit there thinking it's going to get better. Drink it. <laughs> exactly. You know, 99% of wine is made to be consumed within 17 minutes of getting it home from the, the liquor store. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, enjoy and, and don't stress out. You know, there's so much out there to, to experiment with. It's, it's, the research is all uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> Natalie, thanks a lot. A fun book, by the way. It's a, it's a really fun read. It's not just textbook. It's a travelogue. It's fun. It's humorous. It's called Unquenchable, a tipsy quest for the world's best bargain wines. It's by Natalie McLean. Her website is nataliemcclain.com. That's M-A-C-L-E-A-N, nataliemcclain.com. Natalie, again, thanks so much for doing this.